I'm already like 10, 15 minutes after the game. I'm okay with it. I know we, we in a lot of moments, we could have turned or pushed this game in absolute right, the right direction. At, being at half time, 1 0 up and 15 0 in, 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 in shots is, is a crazy away game, to be honest. It feels like a loss. We had so many chances again. We should finish the game off, make it a lot easier for ourselves. And um, obviously, unfortunately, the individual mistake happened with the equalizer, and that we still have so much time to put it right. And I think we were in a rush. We were losing too many balls on a break, where we were wide open. We created so much before the penalty and after that as well. So, you know, it's all on us again. Very mixed emotions. And on one side, I'm very disappointed that you drop seven points in one week. And when you are in winning positions, and you know, we have to blame ourselves, we're making stupid mistakes. Uh, so we have to learn from it. But on the other side, I'm very proud. Uh, you see uh, how we're improving. Uh, and the potential uh, from this squad and this team is amazing. Tell us about your goal. First one at Old Trafford. It, it, it was something special. Yeah, I mean, when uh, Aaron gave me the ball, I just felt like the keeper wouldn't think I would shoot, so I let it off and it felt good and luckily went in. Now it's our job, all of us, I mean the whole Liverpool community, just staying calm. There will be a few guys and go now for it and they, he has to score there and he has to score there. I can tell you, if that would be helpful, I would do it. It's just not helpful. Would I wish we would have won today? Absolutely. But we didn't, so take what you got and keep going. I mean, it was it was chaos again in yep. many ways. Like the cups, I like several of Manchester United's games at the moment. You sense, obviously, Virgil van Dijk in particular, a downbeat at the end. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt it watching it. I was drained watching it, never mind playing in it. I concur with what Virgil said. It, it felt like a defeat because of the dominance and the amount of chances they had. They had enough chances to win a couple of games, really. And sometimes when you play in a big game, you, you can feel comfortable when you've only got a point. If, you, if you've played okay. Yeah. <clears throat> because they played so well, that's why it feels so bad. You know, they were in control of the game and the, the key now, Chappers, is how you respond. It is disappointing, but they're only second on goal difference. There's some bumps still in the road yet, maybe for Arsenal and City, and there's some loads of big games coming up. So uh, still in a great position and, and just put it to bed. Next game now. Um, there are so many things to unpack in, in all of this, in, mm -hmm. in that game. Start with, with the two United goals that obviously turned everything around for them. Well, yeah, I think when you look at it, and we're going to let the run go now, but I think it's more through just Liverpool's little bit, bit of naivety. Two unbelievable goals, unbelievable finishes. And when you look at the XG, United had 0 0.71. So that shows just where they're at. But here you can see Kwanzaa's got the ball. Salah's pulling wide, obviously got the runner from Braddy and deep. But just give Salah the ball, give him another option. He does it, he turns back, and as you can see here, Virgil say, go back to the keeper, start again, nothing's yeah. on. But he's just played a, a, an aimless pass, and, and everyone's done it in training when you're not really looking, but take nothing away from an unbelievable finish. And this is a better example. As he turns around, he never once looks to see what's coming on his right-hand side, also his blind side. Just go back to the keeper, the keeper's coming into shot now, moving across, and then this hit from Fernandez is unbelievable. And the angle we're about to show you now, as my, my good friend Daddy told me, this is a four iron under the trees when you're a bit of trouble for anyone who plays golf. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely He also strike. said that's because he's always in the trees. Yeah, yeah that is that. true. That is true. <laughs> but then again, in, in this situation, look, great play here. Casemiro, a really good play. I really like this player. I think, I think he's a real good talent. Every, every touch is forward and he's trying to be uh, really proactive for, for Man United. But from a coaching point of view, this position he gets here, we're just going to stop it. He's excellent. He's in between four players. Three of them there don't know whose job it is, but he takes his on the back foot and what a hit that is. It's sensational, but this is the best angle for it. And what I'm trying to say is he can go anywhere. He can go forward, he can go backwards. He actually takes it the hardest way because Curtis Jones sells himself there and he never looks up. And then this is just technique. Look, for any young player, concentrate on the technique, try and get your finish, pitch IQ, pitch geography, knows where he is, and it's a fantastic finish from a Special, special for And he takes it all in his stride as well. Absolutely. And I feel like he's just, he's only going to get better. And I feel like when United get better, he'll get better. At the minute, it's quite a, a transitional team, a team that goes forward and he does a lot of running. He gets tired and he's blowing up towards the end of the game. That's why he's bringing him off. But as United get better, he will get better. He's got which a bit on the plane, hasn't he? He's which is really good for England. Yeah. Really, really good for England. Look, Liverpool's, uh, I mean, statistically, were so dominant in that game. So how do you explain it? Well, normally we, we try and find this tactical plan that, you know, outmaneuvers you decide that wasn't really it or creative brilliance. Today, Chappers, was about desire. 
And I know that sounds really derogatory towards this United side, but I'll show you what I mean. I'm talking about running with the ball. I'm talking about winning your battles. Two minutes in, Nunez wins the header against Maguire. Salah runs the back off the back of Wan-Bissaka. That's just a poor start. So Bozlai, Casemiro is trying to mark Bozlai in the first half. He's just, he's out, he's out running. And this is two minutes in, it's a brilliant save from Manan. It should be 1-0. And that set the tone. Completely overran them in so many areas. Look, this ain't great play. This is just poor, look. Robertson at wide left, Garnaccio, Liverpool are in possession. Then you see in the middle of the pitch, Casemiro's got Sabozlai, lets him run in the middle of the box. That's just poor play. You wouldn't expect that from, you know, young, young, young lads playing in a decent level. Again, Diaz for Liverpool, showing what a wide man should be doing. He's winning the ball back, doing his work. Here we see top of the screen again, Robertson and Garnaccio. Little turnover, just too much energy, too much desire to try and go and win the game. Garnaccio might be tired, he's played a lot of games, I don't know. Then you see an overload, which is creating first half over and over again. There's your holding midfield player, Casemiro, <laughs> dawdling back. And it was too easy to play against Manchester United, which we've seen too often. Again, more joy down the left-hand side. Here you can see Diaz running off Dallo, and you can already see Sabo's line has took up that position off the back of Casemiro. Two of them ends up falling to Sally. He's got loads of time in the box. You expect him to score, and he misses. And this is the, these were the type of chance. I mean, this one early in the second half is probably one of the worst of the lot. Salah's dropped into the middle of midfield. Look, there's your two central midfielders leaving it to each other, no communication. It doesn't do anything to run through no. them. And Liverpool were, were able to get onto the back of, uh, onto the United back line time and time again, just through this physicality, this desire to go and win the game and score a goal. Look at them. Overloads, again, poor ball out a little bit, needed to be in front of him, but he managed to dig it out to Nunes. I don't know how he misses that, hits his heel. Dallow falls over, look. Reaction, poor, free shot for Diaz. Maguire doesn't see Salah. These are just levels of concentration that you expect Premier League teams and top players to have. This one's the one. Fernandez, last minute. Kwanzaa gets there first. Goes to this one, Casemiro. I mean, just block him. It's a give and go. It's schoolboy stuff. And then wan of course. It's mistake after mistake after mistake. But So is it? So is it, right? Is it, is it concentration, as you said? Is it? Is it? Just not being in the right place at the or constantly being in the wrong place at the wrong time, or is it desire and effort? Desire, discipline, and effort that's what I think it is. And the reason it's not there is because it's not punished when it's not done. So the same players end up playing week in, week out, and that's the manager. So you don't see players doing that for Liverpool and City and Arsenal because they won't play next week if they don't do it. I mean, Ten Hag is on the, that side where Gonaccio is not running back with Robertson time after time. Why is he letting it happen again and again? Why is someone on the pitch not demanding from the other players leadership? You've got to stay with him. We, Troy and I were watching the game, disbelief at some of the things that was happening. I and mean, if I was playing in midfield alongside Casemiro and he kept letting Sabozlai run off the back of him, I'd be telling him, this is basic stuff. They're so easy to play against. And, and to be fair to them, they showed resilience again. And the young lad in midfield, wow. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, penalty, the penalty is an interesting one, isn't it? Because the natural in inclination is to go, oh, come on, Wan-Bissaka, why, why have you made that tackle mm -hmm. at that point, despite how good he is at slide tackles and last-ditch mm -hmm. tackles? So you were really interesting on how this would be broken down in a meeting the following day. Yeah, so we'd, we'd go through this. And in this situation, I'll, I'll take Daishi, perfect example. He always just say there's, there's three things that will break down before a goal. So in this... Fernandez has dived in there. Look at the reaction of Fernandez. He'd be saying, you're my captain, that's not good enough. We're 2-1 at this point, we're trying to hold on. Casemiro now has to hold his feet because if he comes running in, as Daddy just showed, he's, he's leaving us exposed. So the 1-2 goes round. At this point now, we're saying to Aaron, if we just hold it there, look, Aaron, look at the, look at the overload. It's 4v2 in our favour. Stay on your feet because all Harvey Elliott can do now is take a big touch He's running into But nobody's talking to him. No one's saying nothing. He's running into Harry Maguire, he's running into Amrabat. He does it, he stays on his feet, but what will happen is Aaron, Aaron Wambasapa will get hammered all weekend. His fault, his fault, his fault. And what our managers used to do, and Daishi was the best at it, was be explain how the teams let Aaron down, not Aaron's let the team down. It's really easy to say Aaron's fault, and it's not that. Look at, just look at that dominance, a final one on, on them not taking their chance. I mean, an expected goals of just over three and a half. It, what do you put that down to? I think today it was a little bit of composure. 
I thought Virgil spoke really well when he talked about them being a little bit rushed when they did get when Manu got equalizer. Still lots of time to still control mm. the game. But when they got in the final third, pass was a little bit over hit or under hit. Someone leaning back on an easy chance or you know the hitting it with the wrong part of your foot. It's just it's just a little bit of composure, but they made that many chances. And at it's, times they tried to score so through the foot, they tried to score the perfect goal. Yeah. There was times just because Manu was so many bodies in the box. Just shoot, try and have someone's yeah. heel. It might go in off a little deflection, but it felt like Liverpool today would, after they missed the first couple in the first half, would try to score that perfect goal, which was which is a shame, really. Well, Virgil, you forced your way back to get something, but does it still feel like a blow? Of course. <laughs> and um, obviously, it's all on fault again. You know, we should have been 2 0 up at least at half time. And, Create dangerous moments. We had them under control, and you know it's just, it's just a shame, you know. And um, definitely feels like a loss at this at this point. Your first Old Trafford goal was some goal. Just give us an idea. I mean, I know maybe a little bit of the shine's been taken off it now by their equaliser, but when the net ripples, how was that? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's unbelievable feeling. First, first professional Old Trafford goal, and. Um, to do it in this fixture is also amazing, but as I say, at, at the end of the day, we don't walk away with the three points, so I can't be too happy. I, I want to win, and 24 hours after the game, I'm, I'm still disappointed because we could have some, done so much better, and especially against them, but obviously the race is not over. Uh, we have uh, seven more games, and um, we're going to give it everything that we had, and we need everyone at their best, more than ever, and then we'll see if that's enough. So on one side, very disappointed, again, and we give you um, a certain win out of hands by making, uh, yeah, I would say, <laughs> not a very clever mistake there, uh, like on Thursday, uh, like on last Saturday. And so we lose uh, seven points in one week where we should have had nine points. And that makes a huge difference. On the other side, I'm very proud of this team. Uh, we are so young, uh, coming players in and then give this performance and can play on these levels and it show the future for Man United is very bright. It's, it's a point that many, uh, Manchester United and the most important thing is I know how people see it and it's uh, two points lost and stuff. As far as I'm concerned, I see that we have a point more than before the game. So it's an away game at Manchester United. I think for us the away games at United are more special than for all other teams against us. They put an extra shift in. That's how it is. That we will face that again on next Wednesday, I think, or once in a week. Um, and play against Everton. So these are the, 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 the games we have to be ready for. Do you just feel that something's building at the moment? It's been sort of noticeable how kind of bullish and positive you've been in this interview. Ah, but uh, no one can ignore. Hey, if you ignore uh, that something is going to build here, and then you are blind and the future is very very bright here and we have a lot of high potential players and also players coming after you have seen yesterday uh, the young team and the 18s uh, was it 9-1? No, 9-1 nine one? Nine one. so yeah, we have also potentials coming after and today we have seen and um, yeah, Carnaccio and Kobe Manero but with Willy Kambala uh, we had a, no, a new player coming through uh, it's a potential um, of course, let him enjoy today and from tomorrow on, that's, uh, this must be the standard and uh, this must be his base and he has to step up. But for today, I'm very happy for him. There were one or two dejected faces from your players at full time. Do you just need to make sure that you get across your calm to the players now? I will. No worry. No problem. That's no problem. Really, that's no problem. So we play now at home against Atlanta. Difficult game, but home game. Then another one. We don't have that many home games anymore, so um, we better use that um, occasion. Um, and uh, yeah, but we have a few days to, to, to rest until then, and uh, we will go again. It's all fine. Look, it's how I said, when you, um, if you only can, the team who wins the league in the end should deserve it. That means it must be really difficult. So, and we are in that race, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Working Klopp after disappointment for, for Liverpool, and we heard that from Virgil van Dijk because he spoke before Klopp did. Klopp was a, a little more measured, a little more positive around it. Now even more time has passed. There are a couple of hours after the, the final whistle. 
two points dropped, a point better off than they, they were previously, as Jurgen Klopp said. And what do you think this has done to Liverpool's title chances? I think because of the manner they played, especially first half, and the chances they created, it has to be two points dropped. And you, you're given the... I mean, you'd have looked at it on the basis that if Liverpool could have won the rest of their games, if they'd have won today, they win the title. Now it's not in your hands anymore. But there's going to be still twists and turns. I, I'm, a, I'm convinced by it. We've got Champions League football to play. You know, the two teams, Manchester City and Arsenal, have got tough games. They're going to be maybe if they pick up a couple of injuries, what that can do to the team. You maybe tinker with what you're trying to do. You're trying to manage a Champions League win and also the Premier League. The managers are going to play a big part. Jurgen's done it. Pep's done it. Mikel Arteta hasn't done it yet. But having looked at it with the point, you know, obviously much better goal difference and the point with Arsenal. Arsenal have a better goal. I feel. You have to really make Arsenal favourites right now on that basis. You know, in good form, they're defending well. Teams look like they can't score past them right now. But I look at that game when they go to to the London uh, to the Spur to White Hart Lane is White Hart Lane now. Tottenham Park Stadium. Stadium. <laughs> Stadium. I think that is going to be the game. I really believe that. And if Arsenal can go there and get three points, they they certainly deserve to win the title. But I, I believe that that is a pivotal pivotal match for them. Up to make Manchester City the favourites with a 40% chance of winning the title. Then it's Liverpool on 31 and Arsenal, who currently are in top spot in the table, a 29% 29% chance. Does that well, seem fair to you, Roy? I'm not really sure. I don't think that's certainly wouldn't bad or ass. And if you, do you know, I try and put myself in each it's camp here. And it's I'm a just, prediction rather well, than a prophecy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I get that, Kelly. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think if you're in, do I look? If I was in the Arsenal camp, I'd be quite confident we'd win the league. But I'd also be in Liverpool's camp today. I wouldn't panic so much. You take the draw when you're goal down with five or ten minutes to go. You take the draw. And also, if I was in City's camp, I'd be quite comfortable. I have to say, I think all the three teams must fancy their chances. I mean, people talk about the difficulties of, of the, the, the remaining games. Winning league titles is meant to be difficult. It's, mm. it, it's, it's not meant to be easy. It's meant to be hard. You have to put everything into it. You need, bit, you need a little bit of luck. You need your top players performance. I, I don't take. I wouldn't take too much notice of this this, this percentage of who could win it. Because you look at the games and the performance over the weekend, I'd still... As I said, I'd still be comfortable to be any of the camps that you, I've gone you, to that You've been there and done it. If you could be in one dressing right now, where would it be? Um, I'd probably go with... I'd, I'd be probably more comfortable probably in the city dressing room. Because they've done Just it. Just have it. And even their reaction to last week and, um, you know, the... the, the They've really used our squad over the last few games. They've scored eight goals in two games. I know they've conceded a few soft goals, but really from that experience and because of Pep and people like De Bruyne, I'd probably be want to be in City's camp. But I'd also look at Arsenal the weekend and they're big and strong and they're scoring goals. They're solid at the back. And I wouldn't be so bad to be in the Liverpool camp. If you're asking me, I went with Liverpool last week. Am I allowed to change my mind? Yes, sure. change your mind next week again. If you look, if you look, if you look, if you look at those fixtures, right? If there's one team you think could win, I think, I think, I think, I think City. I think Man City will win all their games there. Oh, well, that's the, that's probably what's being factored yeah, into of course, the percentage of chances exactly of, of winning that doesn't it. Need to say it's going to happen, of course. No. But I just think with City's track record, the way the players, the squad they've used, even bringing in a couple of younger players over the weekend. Um, but of course, there are challenges ahead again. Jamie's mentioned there with Champions League and whatever injuries that might come up. And you look, of course, and Arsenal going to, to Spurs is a huge game, without a doubt. And that's what we're factoring into this. It's not just that the quality of the opposition, but all the emotion that, that comes into it. The fact that Champions League, Europa League football is, is going to come into it and the effects that that might have. That's before you even start to look at, at injuries, plus previous experience in, in title races. And that maybe is why City and many people's pick to be the team that can win mm. their remaining games. Now, obviously, if either Liverpool or Arsenal also do that, it's out of it's out of city's of hands. But if they're the team who are most likely to do but that, it's never been done four years in a row. There's a reason for that because of the demands and the other teams got up around you. Obviously, you look at Arsenal. The hunger they must have to win that title. Again, the, 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 the disappointment for Liverpool today, how they recover from yeah. that. All these, as you said, that emotional roller coaster you have to deal with, and that's where the managers come into it, who yeah. can handle it. Like Klopp, again, after the game today, I thought it was spot on, that vast experience. Yeah, we're disappointed, but we cope and we roll with it, and there's plenty more games to be had. That's where these managers, 
brilliant world-class managers and Arteta probably still has to get to that level of the other two managers but he's doing a brilliant job and he's got that hunger that's why it's intriguing with these personalities of these managers who can get them over the line yeah. and deal with the disappointments if you do have one just like Liverpool will have to deal with the disappointment today but as I said I've been there where you come after the game and players are disappointed but you might look back and go lads when you're a goal down with 5-10 minutes to go don't be that disappointed with a point. That Whatever be, about the performance, that might be the point that wins in the title. Who knows? That can happen. You might look back at this a moment of what a big, what a big point it was. I mean, in terms of the title race, you, and you look at Jurgen Klopp and the way that he's managed it today, it would have been easy for him to maybe say, "Yeah, it was two points dropped," but he doesn't want to put the pressure on his players. He wants to take it away from them, and that's why I think he's a gen he's a genius. He handles the press so well. He handles his players, the emotions, and. That's why this is the best Premier League title race we've ever seen. We've got three runners, three fantastic sides, great players, managers. This is going to go right to the wire. I can even see it going to the last day. That helicopter, the trophy in the sky. The dynamics you know, of all the managers. Perfect. Pep, Pep, one of the greatest managers of all time. Klopp's done an amazing job at Liverpool. And again, he's leaving the emotion side of that. Arteta's done a brilliant job at Arsenal in terms of winning the FA Cup. Rebuilding last year, heavily criticised, saying they bottled it and all this type of carry-on. They've regrouped. Recruited really well in the summer. Three really outstanding players have come into their club and have made them a lot stronger. And they're very much in the mix. But we go back to it. It could, it could be goal difference. It could be a refereeing decision. It's so, so exciting. Three teams, 1.7 games to go. For Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag said... This is progress. We have young players. You need to you need to be able to see that what we're building here is is something. I was, uh, listen, I don't know what he's had. A, obviously, a couple of glasses of wine after the game. I don't know how strong that is, but he seemed really upbeat and I admire for it because he's obviously seen something that I'm not seeing at this moment in time. I'm not saying there's not potential at the football club or with these young players, but in, in terms of competing with Arsenal, Man City, and Liverpool, they are way off it. They're competing at this moment in time with Aston Villa and Spurs for that fourth or fifth position. And at this stage, they're well behind them. So I don't, I don't get his positivity. But maybe, maybe that's just, that's just me. Maybe, maybe obviously been a bit, bit, bit old and grumpy. But he's upbeat. But I certainly didn't see that upbeat performance. I thought two very good goals from Man United and a team that hung in there and stuck at it. And I give him credit for that. But if you look at the bigger picture, I'm not sitting back here and going. Listen, you're not man, you're not on the way back. Far from it. What did you see in that performance? I just saw a, a, a lot of fight. I thought Liverpool again, giving them a Man United a chance to get back into it. Mm. United did score two brilliant goals. Listen, the first one was a, a mistake, but you still have to be punished. And then you got the second goal was outstanding, but they're giving up two soft goals from set pieces. Again, they lost the game the other night with a set piece of that, um, at Chelsea in the last minute. So all these bits of their game, they've got to tidy up. They're playing moments. I'm not sure it's a real team out there. I yeah. can't sit here and go, I think next year Man United will be challenging for league titles. I just can't see it. There's big expectations with recruitment in the summer and new people coming in. But there's a long way back from Man United. It's very difficult to sort of... Well, he's right. You can't... After watching Man United's last few games, you know, I watched the game in Chelsea in midweek and I watched the Brentford game. Was this a devoid of any belief and confidence in the team you know, I've met any Manchester United team I could think of so for him to say that it's, it's hard to buy into it of course he wants to keep his job he knows right now he's under a lot of pressure Man United may be looking you know, for a manager to come in what I will always say is it's alright saying get rid of him but who would you bring in that's always a difficulty so if he gets another opportunity to do it next year of course he'll be buzzing he'll look at the young players look at Maynard's goal today and what he can bring Cambrala came in and I thought was fabulous considering he hadn't played a lot of football but these are what Man United for so long have been brought up on great young talent you know Garnacho's obviously involved as well there are there is talent in this squad make no mistake but they've got to do a lot more and they can't carry on being as inconsistent as what they are. The facts are there, Jamie. Again, again, there's no doubt they've got talented players. Look at this. This is brilliant. You couldn't even dream of doing something like that. Amazing. But you need more than that. You need those characters. You need the leaders. I keep, obviously, repeating myself every every week on here. But that's not you. That's what you need from a group of players. The way Man United are playing is like a mid-table team, a small club. You don't know where you're going to get. There's a bit of excitement. But if you want to win the big prizes or compete to win the big prize, you've got to turn up week in, week out. And these players don't. Mm. The stats will tell you that. They've lost 12 games. Like the, goal difference. The goal difference. Man United after what? Is it minus one or whatever? Mm -hmm. No one here good enough. But but that's that's Martinez comes in, makes a big difference at the back. 
but that's not the be all and end all, you know. And, and, and today, when you look at the players they had in midfield and going for, Man United never looked like they're ever controlling the game. I never watch them and think that they're really in control, where they're going to pass the ball. When you watch Manchester City or even Liverpool, they have a different style, but they look in control of what they're trying to do. With Man United, I struggle to find out really what their direction is. Is he going to get given time? Only they know. Who knows? I mean, there's always pressure. If you're going to manage Manchester United, there's pressure every single day, not just every week. Do you think that Eric Ten Hag's future depends on what happens between now and the, the end of the season, Roy? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, I think that this is on, he's under pressure and uh, you think that top four, top five is out of reach now. Can they win the FA Cup? Is that enough? I'm not sure. I would never sit here and, and, and question, you know, managers' futures or whatever. But he is under huge pressure. Of course he is. Of course he is. That's but that's that's the nature of the beast. You manage Man United, the expectation expectations there. Last year you said, oh, if they get top four and they win a cup and they got it. And this year, it doesn't look they're going to get top four. They get the FA Cup and that help save his job. I don't know because that won't be easier because obviously Man City are still involved. I think what you always want as well as a club is you want progression. Now, so if you looked at where Liverpool were last year, we had a really poor season, and how quickly Jurgen Klopp has changed that by bringing in players. They've been brilliant in their recruitment. You look at what McAllister brings in midfield. He's been fabulous in there. There's been some really good signings. They're bringing young players into the squad. There's just a difference. And that quickly, in the blink of an eye, Liverpool are now contending for a title. Whereas Manchester United have gone backwards in this period. So for him to be as bullish, I don't quite understand. He's got to finish the season really well and just hope that they go, OK, we'll give you some games next season and just see how you get on. But as I said before, it's not that easy to find elite managers like Klopp and Guardiola and these types. They're, not, they're hard to find. Welcome back. So, Arsenal still lead the Premier League at the end of this weekend. Liverpool had the opportunity earlier on at Old Trafford to win and go back there, but they could only draw in what turned out to be a very eventful game, a one-sided first half. But, Michael, you pointed out two minutes in, United had this correctly ruled out for offside, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't have been really from Ganacho's point of view. No, I just felt he was a little bit too eager, Steve. Um, if he bends his run, arcs his run, he might have been able to get in, or he would have been able to get in. Um, you know, he runs directly to the, the goal here. He needs to be arcing his run towards Van Dijk and, and then making the, 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 the direct move. So I thought, you know, he, he, could have, uh, he could have helped himself a little bit there. And then it was all Liverpool after that in the first half. They had chance after chance after chance. So Botsalai here did most things right, fantastic save from the goalkeeper Anana. Um, and then that was the opening goal from the, the corner. Uh, Nunez with the flick on, Diaz at the back post. We thought Dallo maybe, I mean he drops back from a, a position back onto the post and if he had moved forward then, uh, then it would have been okay. But then Liverpool shoot themselves in the foot in that second half there when. Yeah they did and um, I think Manchester United needed that little bit of luck and obviously it comes from a mistake but then fantastic finish as we spoke about earlier from Bruno uh, and then United had momentum then and I think they, they used that well he made a couple of changes um, and then a fantastic goal from from young um, Kobe Maynou um, to put them in the lead and you're hoping then they can hold on to it um, Liverpool will come at them and a couple of chances and um, as we you'll see then a, a moment of madness from Juan Bissaka and gives Liverpool a penalty and allows them to get back in the game. Yeah, that was the frustration. Two penalties in four days, very late on, the manager. Yeah, uh, he should stay, stay his ground there. Obviously, a lot of bodies around him. Um, obviously, a lot waiting for him to uh, to touch his leg and uh, definitely was penalty. And then, in a host of chances, Michael, that was the last one, right on the stroke. Big chance, really big chance. He actually strikes it, really really well and that's my problem with it I think so many strikers nowadays go for the perfect strike when just keeping it down um, would have been the play there I think even if you you stood it and keeping it into the ground it's going to give the goalkeeper a real difficult save to make so disappointing from a Liverpool point of view not to get that equalised because it almost feels like a loss at this stage of the season you can't be dropping any points and now it really has bunched up I mean it's made the title race even more interesting but from a Liverpool point of view I think they've just let it slip a bit there. They are in the race. It's as tight as we've known in a long time. And as you can see, Arsenal top above Liverpool on goal difference only. And then one point to Arsenal. And Virgil van Dijk was interesting though. And he said, we're wasteful. We just need to be more calm. Is that because of the situation? Because of the table? Because it's so tight and they know there's no margin for error? 
I'm not sure. They've been here before. I wouldn't say that I watched it today and thought Liverpool was shaky in any way. Um, I think they've got strikers that do miss chances. You know, Nunez, for example, gets lots and lots of chances, needs lots and lots of chances for him to convert. He almost converts the harder ones. Um, Even Salah, you thought today. Salah, was... yeah, Salah. I mean, he's never been, as a youngster or a younger professional, he's never been the greatest of finishers. He's really sharpened up his act in, in recent years, and obviously his numbers are huge, but he st still can miss chances. Anyone can miss chances. Um, so I don't think it was nerves, as I say. They've, they've been there before. They've played in these big games before. Um, but they will be disappointed in missing so many chances, especially in the first half, only scoring one goal and going in 1-0 up at half-time. It probably gives Manchester United a little bit of lift, them thinking we can't play any worse and we're only one goal down. So, yeah, Liverpool will be disappointed. Similar story to when they played in the FA Cup, actually, a couple of weeks ago. Um, they could have finished the game off early on, and, and they didn't. Didn't learn the lesson today. And uh, it just shows you the most important thing, despite the man you're saying it's defending. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be scored. <laughs> why, why do you think Liverpool might just snatch it? At the end, is that just a hunch? Is that your romantic side, or it's not my romantic side? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope they don't. Um, but I've had this feeling for a, a while now. I just feel that they've put my my snatch the title. I think um, Klopp will use his experience. Um, Van Dijk uses experience of winning the title. And of course, City have won it the last three years. Um, but I've just got. I just I just think Liverpool will will edge him. What's the key? I mean, you, you guys have been here. We remember that famous year at Wigan when it went to the last day and, and you got over the line. What's the key now in these six or seven games when you've got one or two rivals to holding your nerve and getting over the line? I think if I look my time at United, I think when you get the boost and when you really feel that you can win the title, when you play bad and win the match. Um, I think this will happen to Liverpool, Arsenal, or Man City, they will play a bad game, but that game, if they win, they will feel like we can win. This is our title. Today, Liverpool was better, is a better team. They play really well, didn't get the three points. It's very important. It's, it, I would like to see what is going to be the reaction of Liverpool player in next next game, because I felt, looking at the interview of Van Dijk, he felt uh, difficult to take this uh, lose, I would say, of two points mm. against... He said it felt like a defeat, against. didn't he? Exactly. Yeah. Palace at home next. Um, I mean, it's impossible to predict every scoreline, but when you look at that, it, is there a standout set of fixtures that you think, oh, I think they're going yeah. to win it? Manchester City. Manchester City have got the easiest fixtures in my eyes. Um, Liverpool and Arsenal, both reasonably tough. Obviously, from Liverpool's point of view, Everton is, is a local derby. That's going to be tough. West Ham away is never easy. Tottenham they've got to play. Aston Villa away is difficult. Uh, so there's a few difficult ones there. And obviously Arsenal have got a few difficult ones as well. Tottenham away is, is tricky. They've got to play Chelsea. Never easy. Aston Villa, never easy. Manchester United away. So I think they've got four pretty tricky ones as well. Whereas Manchester City, yes, they've got Tottenham away. Apart from that, I fancy them to swat everyone else out of the way. But Arsenal are doing exactly that, though, aren't they? And not conceding any goals at the moment. Yeah, they are. And if there's one team I hope wins it, it's Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one team I hope wins it. Um, Brutal honesty, we love it. Yeah, no, but I think Arsenal are, have been fantastic um, all season. And, you know, I think they have learned from last season. So that's why I'm really interested to see these last seven games, to see how they cope now with the... This is when the pressure... You, you can go through a season... Um, and, and deal with it really well. But this is when that pressure comes on, especially when they come so close last year. This is where the pressure starts, and I'm um, really interested to see how they deal with that, and I hope they deal with it really well. I know you like this, Fida. In their last 11 games, Arsenal have conceded four goals. That's it. So have they got the best foundation at the moment, maybe? I do believe that. I do believe defensively they look uh, strong. Two central defenders, they like to defend. They remind me a bit of uh, Rio Ferdinand myself. So... And I'm with Wayne. Uh, I believe that will be a great story for uh, for Arsenal to win after 20 years, especially uh, Arteta has been uh, assistant to Pep Guardiola. It's a great story that assistant going to get better than uh, this year than than, uh, than Pep Guardiola. So. I just wonder, Steve, as well. Everybody every year says the best team always win the Premier League. 
could this be the year when maybe the best team doesn't win the Premier League? I mean, who is the best team? And, you know, if somebody wins it on goal difference, whatever, it might not be the best team that wins it this year. Mm. That was unfair to say that to Wayne. <laughs> you were in that squad as well. There's no need to bring up losing the title on goal difference at this stage of the day. All right. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, let's talk about the title race. Kai, this is tight, man. It's very, very tight. It's very, very tight. You know, it's one of the interesting season uh, so far. This is really, really, really tight. As you can see right there, Arsenal sitting on the top of the table of the Premier League table, 71 points. Why? Followed by Liverpool on the second place, 71 points. Then Mass City, 70 points. Just one point within the, these three horse race. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. All right. The only reason why Arsenal is sitting on the top table right now is not because of the point, but because of the goals difference. Wow. For the first time in many years, Arsenal is leading in goals difference. Where we have uh, a team like Man City and Liverpool. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. So as you can see right there, you know, the goal difference right now is 51 by, for Arsenal. Then uh, Liverpool is 42. Then Man City is 40. So between Arsenal and uh, Man City is just um, 11 uh, uh, goals difference between Man City and Arsenal. Why between Arsenal and uh, Liverpool is just nine goals different? Wow. Does it mean that at the end of this season, you know, uh, the winner of the Premier League uh, 2023 and 2024 season is going to be uh, with a goal difference? I don't know. But I think that there are still points to be dropped and all that. But I don't want that to be from, from Arsenal. So I think the, the is now in Arsenal's hand because um, you're on top of the league and you just have seven games to go. You know, although let's look at the games that we have. You know, Arsenal have left. Our next game is uh, Ashton Villa at home. Mm, followed by Wolves. Then comes to Chelsea that is just picking up for a reason. I don't know. They are picking up. Although, <laughs> they drawn yesterday game, you know, with the lower, lowest team on uh, in the league. But still, then move on to Tottenham. Then come to Bournemouth, my United, and our last game will be Everton. So, I think we have uh, Arsenal have a tough games ahead. Like Ashton Villa shouldn't be that easy but Arsenal can beat them if you don't look down on them you know they come to Chelsea you know then Tottenham and Man United so my advice is that or you know or my take on this is that Arsenal should take the remaining games as a final game take every single game very very seriously you know Ashton Villa, Wolves, Chelsea, Tottenham, Bournemouth, Man United and Everton all should be taken very very seriously Yes, because if you really want to win the league, this is the time for you to prove it because it's not in your hands. Then, but if we look at Liverpool, Liverpool next game is Crystal Palace, Fulham, Everton, West Ham, Tottenham, Aston Villa, and Wolves again. Okay, Wolves, yeah. Then, if we have to look at Man City, Man City have their next game looting. Hmm. I think Man City have some easy games right here yeah you know they have Luton, Brighton, Nottingham Forest, Wolves, Fulham, West Ham and Tottenham so the only big game that we can see right there with Man City is just Tottenham but in Premier League you don't look down on any team that is my stand you don't look down on any team because anything can happen if you go into any game and look down on the on the team you might be disgraced so what do you guys think do you think Arsenal, this is the year, Arsenal, this is the season Arsenal needs to win Premier League? Or what's your take? Put it on the comment section. I would like to read your comments. We are just a small channel. We want you guys to support us, to grow, encourage us to grow. We're just doing this, me and my son. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Take care and bye for now.